الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, the gracious, the merciful, the master of the earth and the heavens, the king of the day of judgment, Azza wa Jal. And the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be upon all those who follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is indeed the messenger of Allah. I remind myself and remind you to be pious, to remember Allah سبحانه وتعالى in everything that you do. For He عز وجل orders us when He says يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته. ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Oh you believe be God conscious fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى and die in no way except in the way of Islam Oh you believe fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow and fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى for he knows best what you do we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our gathering, to forgive our sins, guide our steps. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, the occasion of the birth of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in fact the occasion of his passing sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same month, Dictate that in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, we have to remember our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to remind one another of his virtues, of his example, of being able to rise up so that we can emulate his example. Rise up so that we can live his legacy and actualize it in our lives. And away from the debate about the manifestations of that celebration, we can talk about that all we want. And that's important for us to know. But we know that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not look for people to praise his birthday. That's not the issue. لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى عيسو بن مريم. He did. He said, "Don't make of me what the Christians did of Isa, because they they deified him. They looked at him in different lights." But he said, "إنما أنا عبد الله ورسوله." That I am the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you were to celebrate, you celebrate the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You celebrate his submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he lived his life in accordance with the guidance of the, the, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, we know he did not do it. Yes, we know that it's not something to be done in, 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 in manifestations that have nothing to do with our deen. But the fact is that that doesn't take away the fact that we ought to remember and celebrate and live the traditions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And without going to either extreme, we must find ways for us to remember. How do we make the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a living reality in our lives every single day of, the, of our existence? One of the things that he reminds us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of, and it's a simple connection that we must remind each other of is to remember the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us in Surah Al-Ahzab إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما So every time you hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ignite in your heart your connection to him ignite your, in your heart your connection to his legacy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and start by just saying it. For if you say it once, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the ajr ten times. And it's a legacy that begins by loving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Begins by cherishing his remembrance. 
and that fuels our willingness and our hard work to follow him sallallahu alayhi wasallam to understand his seerah to understand his life so that we can emulate and follow his example in so many different ways for he was as perfect a human being as can be for he was sallallahu alayhi wasallam the embodiment of the divine guidance of the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you love allah qul in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum allah Say that if you truly, truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is nothing more important in our lives than the love of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and the submission to Him, then it comes from it. A natural byproduct of it is to appreciate the sacrifice and the life of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who not only exemplified the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but He gave up His life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift upon Him to do that throughout. And it was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he gave us the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, describes that to us in multiple places in the Quran. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَتَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Indeed, the reason we celebrate Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ultimate reason why we love him and follow him and strive very hard to emulate him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is because he was the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us so that we can understand and know the divine guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon all of humanity and so that we can learn from the words, from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the hikmah and the wisdom and the implementation and the life that he strove sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to lead as a mere human being endowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the blessings to be the embodiment of that divine guidance. If it wasn't for, for, for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would not have had Islam relate to us. If it wasn't for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would not have had the generations of people who are Given the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that and for more, we love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so my dear brothers and sisters, when we talk about him, we can reflect on so many ways that we remember the legacy of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in those days of hardship, in those days when we are every morning bombarded by the painful news of people suffering across the world, of the lack of humanity, the despicable disregard of the dignity of man in, in Syria and in Halab and, and everywhere. We're inundated by a lot of difficulties. And you know, when I was trying to look for verses that calls us to follow the Prophet ﷺ, when I look at the verse in Surah Al-Ahzab again, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Did you know that this verse is in Surah Al-Ahzab? Did you know that the verse of إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا is also mentioned in Surah Al-Ahzab. But in Surah Al-Ahzab, my dear brothers and sisters, as I was looking for what is so special about that part of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The end of which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said that you have the best example in your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for those who want to remember Allah and for those who want to glorify Allah and want to be successful in the hereafter and mention Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala often. And then towards the tail end of that surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He glorified him in the heavens and he glorified him on this earth. For every time we hear his name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we and the, and the angels and the most high Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed praise him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we look at the gravity of what is happening to us, sometimes we reflect. But our beloved in that very surah was living a chapter of his life. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look at the life of the Prophet 
To many, it may be just a glimpse. To many, it may be just his birth. And maybe the miracles associated with his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And maybe just some of the battles and his hijrah. And then we talk about the, the gravity of his death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and, the, and the great example of how the, the companions reacted. And we're all moved for, by emotions and rightfully so. Because we love him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I talk about his love, we talk about how can we emulate the love of his companions. And when you hear stories, you are beyond being able to appreciate this. And we can talk about so many. I'll mention one of them. There was a man who was an emissary of the people of Quraysh when they met with the Prophet ﷺ in Sulh al Hudaybiyah. And he was an emissary who would go to kings and to go to other places all the time. And he said, by Allah, when they asked him to describe how would these people protect Muhammad ﷺ if we were not to make peace with them? That was the question that Quraysh was raising. And this man, Urwa ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi, he says, by Allah, I went to the Kis Kisra and the people around him. And I went to Qaisar and the people around him. And I went to Najashi and the people around him. And I have met so many kings and heads of tribes. And I have never seen a people that loved Muhammad. Like the, a people that loved their king or their leader. Like the people who loved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The love that we know we need to emulate. And we need to create in our hearts. And we can spend hours talking about that, my dear brothers and sisters, but I am back to the point that when we read about the life of the Prophet ﷺ, let us learn about the brilliance, the genius, the sacrifice, the, pers the perseverance, the resilience, the strength, the morality of the Prophet ﷺ. Because if we think we are facing circumstances that may be difficult, if we think that our people across the world are suffering, and truly they are, then let us seek or seek solace and support when we remember our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ghazwatul al-Khandaq, in Ghazwatul al-Ahzab, in those occasions in which we were called upon to follow the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the state of the believers and he says, وَإِدْزَاغَةُ الْأَبْصَارِ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ That there were hardships. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is a beautiful example to us, was a man who was digging a ditch, was a man who was suffering along with his companions. When they were looking to dig the ditch, in Ghazwat al-Khandaq, Salman reports and he says that we were assigned 40 yards, each of us, each 10 of us were given 40 yards to dig. And it was cold and it was difficult and we didn't have enough nourishment and food in Medina. And we were digging and we were digging until we faced a big rock that we couldn't do anything about. That our axes and broke because of how tough it was. And so we called upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, and it's two parts, he said, that he had a sense of optimism that we couldn't believe, despite the hardship. And we all know the story in which he tried to break the stone, saying, Allahu Akbar, and he would hit the stone, and then a light would come, and the companions would say that he would wait for a moment and look at it, and he did it three times, and he didn't he told them, despite the hardship and stuff, he said, in one light I saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the palaces and the kingdoms of Kisra and in another one of Qaisar and another one of Al-Yaman and so his people were filled with optimism but while he was doing that my dear brothers and sisters the companions saw that he was tying a rock to his stomach sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he was in fact sharing with them his hunger his hardship and there's more stories that comes from that story in which he was with them in the midst of this hardship. So our beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam, imagine when you say sallallahu alayhi wasallam, imagine the cold, the hardship, imagine the stones tied to his stomach, imagine 
his resilience sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the midst of this hardship he is remembering to know that the victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that if you do everything you can you dig a ditch with your own hands you spend the night not eating anything yet you are able to remain hopeful and remain strong with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hunalika tuli al mu'minuna wa zulzilu zilzalan shadida indeed it was a big test but then indeed the example of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his ability to cultivate his iman to cultivate his ability to change the condition of man in allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim so when we learn about his legacy let us learn how do we remain strong let us learn how to become resilient let us learn how we can overcome hardship with the optimism that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed the one that controls the universe. We do it. We do the work. We dig the ditches. We work in the trenches. And we bring forth the change that we know that is better for everybody. My dear brothers and sisters, there is no room for hopelessness. There is no room for fear. There is no room for lack of initiative. And so whether it is the reality of our brothers and sisters and our families in Halab when we are so down and so pained by what goes on there and maybe some of us will feel helpless, what can we do? It's a shame that we let something like this fester but away from Saudi Arabia or from Egypt or from Syria and from all the countries that have given their souls to the devil, away from all that, a real question needs to come from within here. What have we done as American Muslims? What have we done as Muslims in America, Muslim Americans who are part and parcel of a society that can do a lot? And a president who failed us, especially in the, in the matter of Syria. And maybe even a changing reality in our country that is very difficult to predict and very difficult to see. Where is our world going? We can't be sitting there just crying over this. We can't be just waiting for something to happen. But rather we must be embodying the spirit of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must figure out ways, dig up ditches, break stones, figure out how best can we change on the condition that we have. And the fact is, my dear brothers and sisters, whether we like it or not, whether we want to believe it or not, we in this country, the most powerful country in the world today, as Muslims and as full-fledged Americans, probably bear far more responsibility than our helpless people in Halab to be able to change and to be able to affect. And for many, it may seem formidable. It may seem something that it doesn't even, they can't even fathom how can this happen. Well, I'll take you back and a flashback, your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was facing odds similar to anybody's imagination about the success of his mission, he was given the option to have everything he wanted to give up on a cause he hasn't even seen anything happen with it, except that he knows it's the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his answer was as resolute and as firm as it was so many years later, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والله يا عم لو وضعوا الشمس في يميني ووضعوا القمر في شي في في يساري. If you put the sun on my right or if you put the moon on my left, I will not give up on driving this cause. My dear brothers and sisters, that battle of Al Khandaq was followed by his attempt, صلى الله عليه وسلم, to go to Mecca to صلح الحديبية, and then it was followed by غزوة الخيبر, and then it was followed by فتح مكة. All within the span of very few months and years. So he was not somebody who was ready to give up or ready to give in, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, the minute 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him victory to overcome and survive the difficulties of the ditch, the battle of the ditch. He knew that alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him victory. And he knew that it is his time to cultivate the patience and the resilience that came out of this. And so Sulh al Fadaybiya was a peace treaty that allowed Muslims to be recognized for who they are and allowed Islam to engage in freedom, engage at a time when there is no waste in war and violence and injustice, but rather to engage others so that the people that have embraced Islam and the people who recognized the beautiful face of our deen were able to get the message. My dear brothers and sisters, patience yields victory, inshallah. And so when we talk about the challenges ahead, and when we talk about how difficult this picture may be, let us think back. This is our society. This is our people. No matter how wrong they may go, no matter how difficult the, the times may be, we may disagree vehemently on so many things. In fact, we have to believe well within that our vision for what we believe America should be is the vision that is the one that will lead America to goodness, to prosperity, to wellness. To lead America to be able to be one big human family. Not the bigotry and racism and the hatred that is being driven by members of our society. But we have to be able to take the higher road. We have to be able to have the resilience. Let us deliver the American Muslim community as the carrier and the barrier of the strength that will bring America through, inshallah, this time of hardship. This time of lack of leadership in the suffering of the people around the world. This time in the inability to bring forth a society rife with problems and bigotry, divided from within. Because the future must be better for all of us. Those who are deprived of seeing the divine guidance, those who don't see the beauty of the human family coming together must be engaged enough so that we can bring forth the narrative and the vision that we see for this country. But we can't be defeated with from within. We can't be weakened. We can't be afraid. We can't be looking to hide and looking to stay away. But rather, we must engage and we must remain firm and we must be inspired by our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the history that his seerah brings forth to us. We have institutions, we have organizations, we have communities, we have beautiful members of our community. You're no less American than every other American in this society. You're no less decent human being than every decent human being out there. And you need to keep your head high and you need to say no to bigotry and no to racism. And you need to make sure that you're kind and compassionate and you're able to carry a message of peace that will trump any message of hate. But to do this, you must be strong from within. To do this, you must be living your best example, the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, tomorrow we have an event where CARE, one of our leading organizations, is holding its annual event. I'll use this as an example because I'm sure you've heard many announcements about it by my dear brothers and sisters. Don't let despair, don't let fear, don't let worry get to you. For those who are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall never have room for that. Use that to get you more enthused, more strengthened to do more. Wake up every morning and, in, and instill hope in your children. Make sure they're protected from the vile and from the wrong that is rampant in our society. But you got to make them the example that will erase that picture. Islamophobia is on the rise. The challenge from within. Our sisters who are wearing their hijab. Our children who are going to school with the names of Muhammad and Ali and Ahmed. Who's going to give them the strength and the hope if it wasn't us? If it wasn't our, the parents and the fathers and the, and the sisters? We cannot sit back and we can't afford to not engage and be involved and figure out the tools through which we will make America just again. We will make America's foreign policy correct the wrong in the world 
and we will own up to the wrong that's being done in the name of America. Some people may see it as far-fetched, but my dear brothers and sisters, our Prophet ﷺ did not see it far-fetched. And he remained hopeful and he remained strong until he saw it to fruition. The event tomorrow is one that celebrates our successes for so many years and gets us ready so that we can figure out how best we can do and move forward. You need to be there. Tickets are being sold. The event is being advertised. So come there. Bring your families. Do a service to your ki kids and bring them on. You don't know the challenges they face. You don't know the pressures they feel. Bring them so that they can feel proud. They feel they can do something. Give them a narrative in which they can be productive. And believe me, don't let anger and, and, and frustration take the, the better part of you. Don't let thinking about violence and revenge and all this nonsense take you over. It never did to our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the reserve of determination, of wisdom, of strength, of knowing that even if we spend all our lives doing what we believe is righteous and we never live long enough to see its fruition, our kids and the generations from after will, and that is sufficient for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is sufficient for us. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength, to give us the iman, to enable us to remain steadfast and to strengthen us insha'Allah so that we can be a force of good as always. أقول قوي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم. استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه. الصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله. My dear respected brothers and sisters, celebrating the legacy of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means a lifelong struggle of standing for justice, standing for the truth, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like nothing else and loving the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like nothing else, following his dictums, celebrating his sunnah, living by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, attaining his pleasure, and making sure that your life, you conduct your own personal life, your own internal affairs, in the best way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For if we don't even succeed in that battle, we will not be able to succeed in any other battles. And then, making sure that you understand your deen, fully in a comprehensive manner that gives you the ability to remain always positive and remain always able, insha'Allah, to seek others, build the alliances, engage, remain strong, come together, united on a vision for this country that is like no other and make sure that the rest of our people rally behind that vision through public service, through social justice, through championing the cause of everybody and everything that is righteous. And then... Pray and hope, inshallah, that you will be among those who will be in the company of our beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of his companions used to come and attend his meetings and he used to say, O Prophet of Allah, by the time I leave, I am worried. By the time I leave you, and I, I am so happy, I am in my happiest state when I see you, O Prophet of Allah. But then when I go back to retreat to my home, I'm worried that if you pass and I pass, I will not be with you, O Prophet of Allah. What can I do? to be with you, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he said, in Surah An-Nisa, وَمَا يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Indeed, those who follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who follow his commandments, obey his instructions, and honor and celebrate his life, they will be amongst those who will be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, will be with those who are the martyrs and the righteous ones and the ones who do justice. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. 
اللهم اعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها مولاي أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة